So uh, in the previous classes of this course, you have uh, mainly learned about two different topological states. One is the kinetic chain, and the other is the quantum power state, integer quantum power state. So you may wonder, uh, are these two states completely unrelated to each other? And the answer is they are actually closely related. To see that, today let's uh, start from the kinetic chain and see how to construct a cousin of the quantum power state, which is called the quantum anomalous power state. And that is also a prototype model that helps you to understand all the newer stories of topological insulators. So let's start from this uh, familiar Kitaev chain. And uh, uh, I have drawn the chain in a zigzag way, but it's the same one-dimensional chain you have seen before. And you know that depending on whether the even odd bound or odd even bound is stronger, there are two phases. There is this trivial phase and the topological phase, depending on the summarization. Then uh, now let's consider the phase transition point between the two, which happens when you have the Hawking from site one to two, the same as the Hawking from site two to three. So that's the, the case where the Hawking is completely uniform and the, the chain is at its critical point. So you know that means that the, uh, the chain is gapless and uh, uh, there can be electrons or Bayana fermions, uh, either one, but uh, in our model, let's consider electrons. Uh, you have electrons moving in the system to left or right. So there is going to be left mover and right mover depending on the wave function of electrons. You can give a wave packet that uh, has a certain wave function that only moves to the right, or you can give it a wave function that only moves to the left. So now, uh, what's the relation of this, uh, uh, this transition point to this uh, two-dimensional quantum Hall state that we are interested in? So to see that, let's consider a couple of coupled chains. Consider several of these Kitaev chains, and then we will introduce coupling between them. So as we have discussed, there are right mover and left movers on each chain, and then uh, when you couple them, by uh, depending on what coupling you turn on, you can control which uh, electrons couple to the other chain. So in particular, you can you can design a very particular coupling that only couples the left mover of this chain to the right mover of the next chain, and that doesn't couple the right mover of this chain to the next mover. So uh, if you introduce such a coupling, then the consequence is pretty clear. So this gives you that picture, which says that uh, the left mover, given by the blue arrows, the left mover will couple to the right mover of the second chain, then uh, that forms a, a bound state. So basically the electrons will got back scattered, and there is no uh, uh, propagation electrons anymore. So when you do this coupling one by one, one by one, in the end, you find that what you get is a state where the electron completely does not propagate in the box because they got back scattered. And uh, the only thing that can propagate in the system is this left mover uh, in the bottom edge and the right mover on the top edge. So uh, these are the things left because they're not coupled to anything. So you see immediately the relation to quantum power state. In the quantum power state, you have these electrons moving in Lorentz force like this, and, and they uh, consequently the electron uh, is incompressible in the box. There is no uh, conductivity, but uh, in the, at the boundary there is a chiral eddy state. So very similar thing happened here for a very different reason. So uh, you don't have an external magnetic field. You don't have flux. The electron move around uh, following the lattice do not see any uh, flux on average. Uh, the, there is a completely well-defined uh, translation symmetry on the lattice, but you have the same kind of uh, eddy states. So this is actually uh, topologically in the same phase as the quantum Hall state. This is what is called a quantum anomalous Hall state. So uh, the key feature of the quantum anomalous Hall state is you have this incompressible state in the bulk, and you have this chiral edge state at the boundary. And uh, then uh, now uh, we, we have talked about this uh, quantum anomalous Hall state. Let's add another twist to the system. We can ask, what if we not only turn on this coupling, this particular coupling that gives me the quantum anomalous cross state that couples the blue to the red of the next chain. What if I introduce another term that couples the blue and red in the same chain? So what is that? That's actually something uh, very familiar. That's something that's uh, coupling the left and right mover in a single chain, which means you go away from this, uh, uh, this critical point. So if each chain is not exactly at the critical point, but it's something uh, deviate from it, that means the coupling between the blue and red, uh, the left and red mover of a single chain. 
So now you have a computation between the coupling of the uh, right and left mover in a single chain and the coupling between two chains. So this computation is very similar to the one-dimensional picture. If you view it this direction, it looks like a Kitayev chain for any fixed momentum. It looks like a one-dimensional chain where this demoralization happens. So then it's very natural to generalize the one-dimensional story and ask, what happens if I tune these two couplings to be the same? And then you are going to kill this quantum anomaly state because each left mover is equally coupled to the right mover on top, uh, above and below it. So you don't know which one uh, it prefers to hop to. So the whole system actually goes across a phase transition. And this is very interesting because this is actually a model that tells you uh, the phase transition between fractional quantum, between sorry the quantum anomalous cost state and uh, uh, the the trivial state, trivial insertion state. So if you calculate the Hopkins activity of the system, then you will get this quantized number, which is one in this case uh, for the quantum anomalous cost state, and you will get zero in the other case where each chain, uh, the intra chain coupling is very strong, so the coupling between chains can be ignored. And then when you uh, cross over between the two, then there is this phase transition point where the two-dimensional system becomes massless, and uh, actually the dispersion looks like a Dirac cone. So uh, this is a, a very interesting uh, point that the massless Dirac fermion is deeply related to topological state and quantum power physics, uh, because when you drive the quantum power state to phase conditions where the Hawking change, uh, then you, you get this uh, Dirac fermion. 